Let me see them. Good. Now all we've got to do is fill in the names. Then you've made your final choice? Yes. Will you get me those files, please? That is one of them. An Englishman. A titled Englishman. Lord Brett Sinclair. Mm -hmm. What do you know about him? Everything. Will he fall for it? If we're clever enough. <laughs> Who's the other? That is something different. An American. Danny Wilde. About him, I don't know everything. There are some oddly blank areas in his background, but... I know enough. You think you can snare him too? I've got two. One without the other is no good to me. It won't work without them both. Why these? They each have something, but jointly, like chemicals. Take two relatively harmless compounds, say nitro and glycerin. Mix them both together and you have a very potent combination. Handle it carelessly and it can blow your head off. I like the analogy. Nitro and glycerin, and I like the fuse. Excuse me, sir. We're coming into Nice Airport. Oh, I didn't know we took off. <laughs> this is it. Do songs, Arrivé. Oh.
to make reservations for you and charge everything to the Banque de France. Well, then start charging. And uh, if you got a bellboy, send up the luggage. Or maybe a bell girl. Bell girl, get it? Bell girl, forget it. Well, you see, we were simply told that your wishes were our command. Not at you to which I... Two Creole screams, please. Monsieur? The two Creoles. Are you new here? Yes, monsieur. Oh, let me tell you, next to women and dogs, the man's best friend is a Creole scream. Are you listening? Yes, sir. A jigger of white rum, a dash of bitters, chilled vermouth, chilled, not iced, and a measure of grenadine. Then mix, stir in some crushed ice, shake, strain, and pour. Top it off with one olive. Two. Who says something? No, I said two. Two. You were perfect up until the olives. Two olives. That way you can see they can gently bounce up against each other. Well, I'm afraid the spectacle of two olives gently bouncing up against each other is a pleasure I shall forego. One. Oh, but you don't want to bust up a pair. Why not? It's cruel. Two. You're going to thank me for this, believe me. Kindly allow me to make up my own mind. One. Well, uh, excuse me, your mind, yes, but not the drinks. Two. Now, I ought to know that Creole scream is an American drink. Well, then you ought to know that it comes from a southern state invented by a gentleman. An English gentleman. One olive. Oh. Well, I didn't know that. Well, you do now. I'm only uh, only trying to do you a favor. Oh. Well, then, why don't you leave the bar? Or the, the restaurant? Or better still, the country? Listen, friend. 
Do not call me friend. People might think you're serious. Are you looking for a fight? No. Are you? Well, I wasn't, but I am now. <laughs> yeah. Have an endearing quality, honesty. Mm. Yeah, inside or outside, huh? I have a choice. Yes. Inside, there's no air conditioning outside. Not Sinclair, please. Don't worry, Bruno. All damages will be paid for. Lord Sinclair. Would you believe it? I never did it to a lord before. Another endearing quality. Optimism. Oh. 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 I'm terribly sorry. I must have slipped on something. Can you stand there? Oh, you Would you mind your own business? Oh. Sit down, my dear. It's only take a moment. I don't need your help. I'm not helping you. I'm trying to get this off the gentleman. Oh, I see. Oh. Was that any help? Perhaps it's some kind of new open prison. Yeah, maybe it is. What 
evening, gentlemen. Please, sit down. Do make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen. Oh, you prefer to remain on your feet, Mr. Wilde. It's an old habit. Ah, yes. A, a legacy of those old infighting days in the Bronx, I imagine. However, you will have a drink. A Creole scream for you, Lord Sinclair, with uh, one olive. You see. And for you, Mr. Wilde, with two olives. That's right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you, sir. Although I do feel at a certain disadvantage. Well, you are. You're both still under arrest. Your health, gentlemen. How would you like three months in jail? My name is Fulton. I am a judge, or I should have said I was a judge. I have now retired, but um, don't let that mislead you. Without going into details, I do assure you I can promise you three months inside. He makes it sound like we won first prize. Yeah. Ninety days, no option of a fine, no remission. I can arrange it. Or let us say I might arrange it. Oh, yes, let's do say that. <laughs> Orphan. <laughs> Irrepressible. Optimistic. Right. Courageous and a sense of humor. Those are great qualities, Mr. Wilde. Qualities that pulled you out of a New York slum and pushed you to the top of the financial tree. You have made and lost several fortunes. Now, money making has become so easy for you that you don't really bother anymore. You have a remarkable talent, Mr. Wilde. But what have you done with it? You just drift around the world, gambling and womanizing. What have you done with those qualities? What have you achieved over the past few years? Oh, you've wasted yourself, Mr. Wilde. You were a nothing who became something. And now, you're a nothing again. In fact, you're no better than Lord Sinclair here. Lord Brett Sinclair. Now, that was once a proud and noble name. A name that fought for justice and defended freedom. What have you done with it? Oh, well, you are a first-class athlete. You're a connoisseur of the arts, a gourmet with a lusty taste in wine and women. And you speak how many languages is it? Six? Uh, seven. Seven. And all you ever use them for is to order a cocktail. Yours is the glib tongue at a hundred mindless parties. Lord Brett Sinclair, born with a silver spoon in his mouth. And all he ever does is lick the jam from it. Two adult men, both with immense quality and potential. And what do you find to do with it? You fight. You fight over an olive. Two olives. You're both facile and foolish and a useless waste of humanity. But you like to fight. All right. I'll give you a fight. If you're up to it. I'll either make use of you or I'll see that you're put away for three months. That's blackmail. What do we have to do? No, hold on. This is out and out coercion. Take a look at him. He means business. That's three months, right? Ninety days. I can count. And nights. What do we have to do? It's a question of identification. I like it. It's done it. She says she is Maria Lorenzo, but if she's the girl I think she is, she'll have a little heart-shaped birthmark in the small of her back. Who do you think she is? That gentleman is for you to find out. All we have to do is see whether she has a birthmark. You mean just to check her out, right? That's right. Well, that's your choice, gentlemen. A simple task or 90 days? the uncertainties that uh, add spice to life. Yeah, well, you must get a lot of them. Hmm? Uncertainties, I mean, the way you look at everything. What is wrong with the way I look? Well, there's nothing really wrong with the way you look. Maybe a little too dignified, too stuffy. You know, not enough razzmatazz. Would you do one big favor for me? Fix the brakes on your car. No, if you ever see any razzmatazz on my shoulder, just brush it off. <laughs> 
funny, funny, funny. Okay, leave it to me. Us. All right, I'll have it wrapped up in ten minutes, believe me. We are, regrettably, I'll admit, in this together. Besides, I have a plan to captivate her interest. Fascinate her, I pose as an intrepid explorer just returned from the interior with my latest discovery, a Neolithic gibbering ape-man. Oh. Yes, simple for you, you just continue to gibber. Well, I've got a better plan. Why don't you go take a swim and start the drown? And you jump in and save me. No, I jump in and hold you under. That way, I'm a hero. I've got a better idea, you got a coin. We'll toss for it. Simple as that. Then nothing could be fairer, okay? Heads I win, tails you lose. Tails you lose. Oh, see you later. Uh, hold the car. Oh, I forgot. Incredible. Incredible. I don't believe it. Just incredible. What's incredible? Your face. Is something wrong with it? <laughs> Not at all. As a matter of fact, you don't mind if I sit down. Thank you. It's beautiful. Please go away. Do you know you're probably related? It was your great, 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 great grandmother. What are you talking about? Do you know Milan? Very well indeed. Oh, well, this is outside of Milan, actually. Way outside of Milan. It's a small little village, and it's called Pasolini. And there's a, there's a chapel there that it's called the Shrine of the Grandies. The Grandies are Spanish. Well, that's what makes it unique. It's an Italian-Spanish uh, village. You know, it's been baffling historians for years. Can I help you? Please go away. Well, uh, this chapel, I, I go there a lot. You know, I've got this feeling for these kind of joints. I mean these kind of places that get, gets me here and here and as a matter of fact Will gets you me everywhere. please go away? Well, there's this painting on the wall of this chapel of a heart. I mean, of a girl. And she's reputed to be the most beautiful girl in all of Italy. And I, I just love to go and look and look and look and look and look. <laughs> it makes a man feel um, humble. Somebody else is trying to make time with her. Maria. Maria. Ah, I love it. Sounds so romantic, doesn't it? You must love it yourself. Excuse me, is this man bothering you? Is he a friend of yours? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm a psychiatrist. If he has been bothering you, I can only apologize and say that I have tried to keep uh, him under control. Would you excuse us, please? Would you just go away and stop bothering me? He follows me everywhere now I go. you see what I mean? Persecution mania. Allow me to introduce myself. Brett Sinclair. Brett to my friends, but uh, you may call me darling. In fact, I declare today a public holiday. The three of us? Well, uh, we're going to need a butler. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me five minutes to change. <laughs> we'll see you in the lobby. Uh-huh. Ciao. Ciao. Did you get a look? No. I've left my bag. <laughs> Here it is. In the lobby. real name now and we're uh, off to the races. Get a dog here and we search our room. Like taking candy from a baby. So I noticed. Shall we? I believe that this will do the trick. I believe it will deceive them. It contains a great deal of information about Maria and some manufactured evidence linking Wilde and Sinclair with me. Now, put it in Wilde's room. Where it can be found. You know, if my superiors ever find out that I'm helping you, I shall get drummed out of the force. Yes, I know, Inspector Flavel, and I appreciate what you're doing. And I'm sure you realize it's in the best possible cause. Uh, perhaps. But I still think you're wrong about the whole thing. Well, we shall soon know the truth about that. But if you are right, this is going to put those two young men in very serious danger. Yes. But if they're half the men I believe they are, they'll be able to take care of themselves. Their sakes, I hope so. Yes, I hope so. 
so too. We'll uh, call for you. Oh, no, I'll see you there. I didn't get it. Uh. When? Since we started out. Oh, you... Since we started out. see them again? I'm having dinner with them tonight. Yes. And this time you're not going to spoil things. Every time I meet somebody I like, you stop me from seeing them. Only the ones who could be dangerous. Now, please try to understand. This is our job. I don't care about your job. For once, I've enjoyed myself. You think they have no motive for uh, squiring your aunt? No. Why should they have? Sorry, Maria. Found this in the American's room. Chapter and verse on you. Everything you've done since you were six years old. I don't know whether they're police or press, but either way, you don't see them again. <sighs> I'm very sorry. But this time it's bad, Maria. So bad I'm taking you out of town. I'll tell you that, but there is someone I want you to meet. Do I have a choice? <laughs> no. Did you get your coat? I want to tell them I won't be meeting them for dinner. Treva will take care of that. Yeah. You will tell them, won't you, Treva? She can't meet them for dinner. Yeah. Sorry, my lord, we are full. Oh, my dear Bruno, tonight we are at peace with the world. Ten skilled workmen have labored ceaselessly to redecorate the room. Oh, and they've done a fine job. Fine job. Oh, hey, pal, nice. beautiful. So nice. Oh, really nice. Yeah. nice. Pal? Oh, yeah, my body. Your, uh, your differences have been settled? Are you kidding? <laughs> well, as you can see, Bruno, our relationship was one of complete accord and harmony. Yeah. Then I shall be pleased to serve you. Oh, wonderful. Oh, Bruno, uh, mm -hmm. round about the middle of dinner, I'd like you to call me away to the telephone. But naturally, my lord. All you have to do is uh, keep her talking. It may be difficult, but try not to bore her to death. Oh, it's 
sit down. <clears throat> Friends of yours? Uh, I don't think so. Why don't you find a chair? Braille won't be coming tonight. No, he won't be. I guess he's from the telegraph company. Then why doesn't he sing the message? He can't sing. No, oh, it's possible. Looks like a baritone to me. He wants some advice. Not particularly, but I suppose we're going to get it anyway. Please, please, go ahead. Get out of town. Oh, oh well, that's easier said than done. You got to pack, you got to check out at a hotel, True. you got to get a plane. And something else. Yes. Don't see Maria again. Don't ever see her. I think he's trying to tell us something. You're putting me on. No. Nope. All right. If I can't tell you, then I'll have to show you. She's got a birthmark in her back. Huh? And her real name is uh, Michelle Annette Dupont, right? But you seem more concerned in how we did it. Well, of course I am. I've always known she was Michelle Dupont. All right. So it went wrong. What do you want done now? You mean it? Fulton? And the two guys? All right, but permanent this time. Right. You see, I had to set a red rag to a bull. Well, gentlemen, you provided the red rag. What? I also took the liberty of planting some information which made you both look very dangerous to the people I'm after. Now, wait a minute. Stage one has been a cut. What stage one? We had a deal. A little matter of evading 90 days. Don't worry about that. That's all settled, forgotten and forgiven. Oh, forgotten oh. and forgiven, did you? Oh, I did forgotten indeed. Forgotten and forgiven. Oh, now, wait a minute. You, you still could help. You could talk 
all night if you like. But we wouldn't stay here a second longer. Where you go? Get our drinks. We didn't finish our lights. Oh, I've been looking for you. I didn't think I'd go this far. Oh, in. There's a pistol in my desk. I go this way. Turn left. We spent some time with Marie. Well, of course it is. You set us up for this. I have two why you suckered us into this. Does yeah. the name Robert Dupont mean anything to you? Well, nothing apart from the fact that uh, Maria's surname is Dupont. Robert was her brother. Robert Dupont, the racketeer? Well, he's dead. He's, he was shot two years ago. Oh, forgive me, but the name means nothing to me. Robert Dupont was a gangster, a racketeer, who ran the whole Mediterranean crime syndicate. You heard about crime? He was a fink in a hood. I'm sorry, but the London Times devotes very little space to finks and hoods. But I gather he was not a nice man to know. An evil man. But he's dead. His body was never found. After his death, they expected the usual struggle for power, gang war, shoot-ups, killings, but it never happened. What did? Nothing. The whole corrupt organization went on working as smoothly as ever. Which leads you to one inevitable conclusion. Precisely. see this through to the end. Well, you make me angry enough. You think I'm going to risk my life or his? Both of you got to be. Come along, Stanley. Well, they do say discretion is the better part of that. Well, I can't ask any more of you. I'll, from here on, go it alone. in the middle. Who needs it? Certainly not I. Would you look at the road? Certainly not I. You uh, suppose he meant what he said about going it alone? Oh, I think so. He's a pretty tough old guy. Us up against you, Bob. Well, it uh, would be a challenge, I suppose. Oh, uh, well, definitely. Well, we got other things to do. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. What have you got to do? Nothing. Certainly not I, me neither. <laughs> we got to be nuts. 
some cases. That's the point, is we don't like being pushed around, do we? Would you hurry? Would we'll try a forward gear. I went through every paper I could find in that house. There's no hint to where this Dupont cat may be. How about you? Well, apart from the fact this comes from a vineyard area. What? It's full of wine-making equipment. Well, there's nothing here but a, a label. Chateau Payard. Why didn't you? Well, I'm a coward. No. Hi, Judge. Here come the judge. Oh, gentlemen, I, I know this will sound ridiculously inadequate, but, uh, well, under the circumstances, I do offer you my most abject apologies. Oh, uh, that's okay. We decided to come out on our own. We came to help you, really. That was our first mistake. Possibly your last. Well, break it to us gently. Or they'll kill us. Did they have to kill us? Oh. I thought they might do something serious. Now, everything has been covered. You're quite uh, sure of that. Positive. Good, good. Now, you'd better see how the others are coming along. Why, Judge? Why? Why your involvement in all this? I sat as a judge for 15 years, and during that time, I did my best to defend the innocent and punish the guilty, the guilty ones that came to court, that is. One of the anomalies of the law is that in protecting the innocent, the guilty often go free, too. Hmm? Since my retirement, I've done my best to redress that in my small, private way. In fact, it's become an obsession. You see, now I've time to think, to study, to search for loopholes that others might have overlooked, to ferret out chase an idea. Do you think I'm a crazy old man? No, I uh, think you're one of the sanest men I ever met. <coughs> I've done it. The lock? Uh, no, my fingernail. I broke my fingernail. You are wasting your time. I, I, I've searched the whole area. There is no way out. I suggest we uh, all have a drink. Mr. Wilde, 
Let us bring your friends in. Ah, present, we Mr. have guests. Take them outside. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Four pounds. How would you like a little wine? How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Four pounds. Wait a minute. Now, this is no reason to get so nervous. Oh, Shooting her own brother. Yeah, well, maybe she didn't like him. Bonjour. I'll tell you what I like think, then. The bill we're checking out I'll tell you what I think. I think she wanted to be an only child. Yeah, probably. It's a most ridiculous situation. I tell you, I'm not sorry it's over, but I really rather enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure meeting you and being with you. Thank you. There's one thing you could do for me. What's that? Never mention that name again. What name? Oh, excuse me. Judge Fulton sent me. You must help me. I'm in serious trouble. Uh, you would like to talk somewhere private? Well, come along with us. We have a nice private place you can speak. My very oh, the key, the key, the key, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wait. Oh. Come, come on, on in, Daniel. Did you oh, think I'd leave you up there? <laughs> 